Cassandra. A woman of fragile and humble appearance with white hair always tied up in a simple bun and clothes worn by time, had the habit of walking every day along the busy avenue where the famous Elegance Beauty Salon was located. The establishment, with its large glass windows and sophisticated decoration, belonged to the vain and successful Cynthia. At 35 years old, Cynthia boasted stunning beauty and a proud demeanor, always dressed in the latest fashion trends. She owned one of the largest and most luxurious salons in the city, with a clientele of wealthy and influential women. Often, Cassandra would stop in front of elegance, to admire the transformations that happened inside, dreaming of the possibility of one day being able to enjoy such a refined treatment. However, Cynthia did not view the constant presence of the elderly woman in front of her establishment kindly. Whenever she noticed Cassandra standing, observing the salon through the windows, she approached with a disdainful look and humiliated her. In one of those moments, Cynthia opened the salon door and, with a sarcastic smile, said, Cassandra, how many times have I told you that this place is not for people like you? Why do you insist on staying here? Cassandra, with a sad but determined look, replied, I just want to appreciate the beauty that you create inside here, my daughter. I'm not hurting anyone. Cynthia, irritated, retorted, that's exactly the image I don't want for my salon. You drive away clients with your beggar-like appearance. Now go away and don't come back. Cassandra lowered her head and slowly walked away, while Cynthia went back inside the salon, fuming with anger. However, even in the face of Cynthia's harsh words, Cassandra, with her persistence and hope, returned to the same spot every day. She didn't let herself be shaken because she believed that, somehow, that place would still bring her something good. And so, Cassandra continued to admire the beauty and elegance of elegance clients, dreaming of a day when she too could enjoy such a refined treatment. On Cassandra's 55th birthday, she gathered the courage to enter the elegance salon with the desire to have a special hairstyle. With a shy smile and hopeful look, she approached the reception counter and said, Excuse me, today is my birthday and I would love to have a special hairstyle. But I don't have the money to pay for it. Could someone help me? The young and passionate hairdresser Naomi, who was nearby, heard Cassandra's request and was touched by her story. With a gentle and warm smile, Naomi replied, Of course, Cassandra. I would be very happy to help you. Let's choose a beautiful hairstyle for you, and I'll pay for it with my own salary. After all, everyone deserves to feel special on their birthday. Cassandra, moved, opened a broad smile and thanked. Thank you very much, my daughter. God bless you for your kindness. Today, thanks to you, I will feel beautiful and special. Naomi led Cassandra to one of the salon chairs, picked up a magazine with hairstyles, and began to help her choose the perfect look for her birthday. Meanwhile, Cassandra's joy and gratitude infected everyone around her, and Naomi felt fulfilled by being able to make a difference in that humble woman's life. The next day, Cynthia arrived at the salon and soon noticed that something was different. She noticed that the staff whispered to each other and cast furtive glances in her direction. Intrigued, Cynthia approached one of the hairdressers and asked, What's going on here? Why is everyone acting strange? A hairdresser hesitated for a moment and then decided to tell the truth. Yesterday, Cassandra came to the salon to have a special hairstyle because it was her birthday. Naomi was moved by her story and did the hairstyle for her without charging anything. She said she would pay for it with her own salary. Upon hearing that, Cynthia felt anger growing inside her. Without thinking twice, she called Naomi and, with an authoritative tone, said, Naomi, you know very well that I don't allow people like Cassandra to come to my salon. And yet, you did her hairstyle and still intend to pay for it with your own salary? That's unacceptable. Naomi, surprised by Cynthia's reaction, tried to explain. 
Cynthia, I just wanted to help. Cassandra deserved to feel special on her birthday, and I don't mind paying for the service. Cynthia, inflexible, interrupted Naomi. It doesn't matter what you think or don't think. I am the owner of the salon and I decide who can or cannot be served here. You have disrespected my authority and, for that, you're fired. Pack your things and leave. Naomi, with tears in her eyes, gathered her belongings and left the elegance salon, while Cynthia watched with a cold and determined expression, showing that she would not accept disobedience in her establishment. Even though she was sad about her dismissal, Naomi didn't let it discourage her. She decided to move forward and open her own beauty salon. Initially, she started attending clients at home, taking her equipment and products in an improvised suitcase. Naomi's talent was undeniable, and gradually, her clientele grew, as well as recommendations for her work. Naomi, you're amazing. I never thought my hair could look like this, said a satisfied client. Thank you. It's a pleasure to enhance people's beauty, Naomi always replied with a smile on her face. Over time, Naomi saved up enough money to open her own salon. Named, Beauty and Love, the establishment aimed to offer a welcoming and inclusive environment where everyone was welcome. Five years after her dismissal, Naomi's salon became one of the largest in the city, directly competing with Cynthia's elegance. The two became great rivals. During this period, Naomi and Cassandra became friends. They shared many stories and vented to each other, and the elderly woman, always wise, advised Naomi not to hold grudges in her heart. My daughter, I know Cynthia hurt you, but holding on to hatred in your heart will only make you suffer. It's best to forgive and move on, Cassandra said. I know, Cassandra, but it's so hard to forget the humiliation I went through, Naomi replied, still hurt by the unfair dismissal. Cassandra, with her serene gaze and soft voice, continued to encourage Naomi to find peace, leaving the past behind and focusing on the success of her new salon, which was the result of her love for her profession and her unquestionable talent. On a day like any other, the unexpected happened. Cynthia was involved in a very serious accident, and the news quickly spread throughout the town. Upon hearing the report, Cassandra was visibly upset, with a look of despair on her face. Oh my god! Cynthia! Cassandra stammered, tears in her eyes. Naomi, worried and confused by the old lady's reaction, tried to understand the reason for such despair. Cassandra, I know Cynthia treated you badly in the past, but I never imagined you would be so concerned about her. Why does this affect you so much? Cassandra, with a choked voice, replied. I need to go to the hospital now, Naomi. I, I can't explain it now, but it's very important. At the hospital, doctors gathered to give information about Cynthia's health status. Dr. Mendez, in charge of the case, addressed Cassandra and Naomi with a concerned expression. Unfortunately, Cynthia's condition is very serious, began the doctor, with a serious tone. She urgently needs a blood transfusion. However, her blood type is extremely rare, and we don't have any available in our local blood bank. We are in contact with other hospitals, but time is crucial. Upon hearing this, Cassandra felt a tightness in her heart and promptly offered to donate her blood. I can donate my blood to her. I know I can help, said Cassandra, determinedly. The doctors, surprised and incredulous at Cassandra's offer, let out a nervous laugh and then explained the situation. Cassandra, we really appreciate your willingness to help, but unfortunately, you are 60 years old and, due to your advanced age, you are not a suitable candidate for blood donation, clarified Dr. Mendez, trying to be gentle. Naomi, still confused by Cassandra's insistence, couldn't help but ask. Why do you insist on donating blood to Cynthia, Cassandra? What is happening? That's when Cassandra revealed the bombshell truth. Naomi, I am Cynthia's mother. We have the same rare blood. 
I know it's risky, but I am willing to sign all the necessary liability forms to save my daughter's life. The revelation shocked everyone, especially Naomi. Cassandra, with courage and determination, was willing to do the impossible to save Cynthia's life, even after all the years of humiliation and contempt she faced. After signing the responsibility terms, Cassandra was able to donate her blood, and Cynthia's life was saved thanks to the transfusion. When Cynthia woke up in the hospital, still weak but conscious, Naomi and Cassandra were by her side. Cynthia, I need to tell you something. Cassandra started, with tears in her eyes. Cynthia looked at her, still confused by everything that had happened. I'm your biological mother, dear. I donated my blood to save you because we have the same rare blood type, revealed Cassandra. Cynthia, emotional and surprised, couldn't believe what she was hearing. With tears in her eyes, she asked her mother for forgiveness. Mom, forgive me for everything I did and for the time we lost. I never knew the truth, Cynthia said, sobbing. Cassandra hugged her daughter and confessed. When I was young, I got pregnant by a boyfriend who ran away when he found out I was expecting a baby. My father would never forgive me and would have kicked me out. At that time it would have been a disgrace to my family for a young, unmarried woman to be pregnant. I gave you up to avoid a much bigger tragedy. My mother helped me escape to a farm of an aunt, where I stayed until you were born so that I could give you up for adoption. I never wanted to abandon you, but at the time I had no choice. It was either that or my father might have done something terrible. After that, I never heard from you again but I always dreamed of finding you. Years ago, I took all my savings and hired a detective to help me find you and saw that you had become very rich and owned a very fancy salon. I was too ashamed and too afraid that you would reject me, but looking into the salon every day and seeing you was enough to brighten my heart. Cynthia, with tears in her eyes, shared her part of the story. Mom, my childhood was also very difficult. I had a lot of health problems when I was young and only became a healthy child at four years old. Cynthia recounted. Her voice choked with emotion. Because of my age, I ended up not being adopted. In the orphanage, older children constantly bullied me, and that's when I swore to myself that one day I would be very rich and never go through that again. Cynthia paused for a moment, taking a deep breath, before continuing. I managed to achieve my goals, mom, but I became a bitter person. I didn't know how to deal with the emptiness inside me and took it out on others, like you, Naomi, my employees, and I spent my life trying to please those rich salon clients. Cassandra listened attentively to her daughter, understanding the pain she carried within. With a loving and compassionate look, she replied, Cynthia, my daughter, I understand what you've been through. Now we are together and can support each other. Let's learn to forgive and move on, leaving all this bitterness behind. Both, emotional, hugged, strengthening the family ties that had been lost for so long. After hearing Cassandra's emotional story, Cynthia realized that the reasons for her own suffering were rooted in a past marked by resentment and misunderstandings. So. She decided to change her attitude and seek reconciliation with Naomi, her former rival. Cynthia invited Naomi for a meeting at a cozy cafe. The two sat down and, with tears in her eyes, Cynthia spoke. Naomi. I heard my mother's story and understood that we both share a painful past. I was wrong to judge you and treat you badly. I apologize and would like to make things right. Naomi. Surprised by Cynthia's change of attitude, emotionally replied. Cynthia, I also apologize for my behavior. Let's leave the past behind and start a new story together. The two former rivals then hugged and sealed the peace with a sincere forgiveness. They decided to join forces and become partners, expanding their businesses and proving that love and forgiveness have the power to transform lives. Cassandra, Cynthia, and Naomi, now united by blood ties and the power of forgiveness, 
work together and achieve prosperity and happiness in their lives. Love and compassion prevailed, showing that even in the most difficult situations, forgiveness and unity can change destinies and heal the wounds of the past. And that's how we come to the end of this emotional and inspiring story, my friends. Through love, forgiveness, and unity, Cynthia, Naomi, and Cassandra were able to transform their lives and achieve prosperity and happiness together. May this story serve as an example and inspiration to all of us, showing that even in the most difficult situations, forgiveness and unity can change destinies and heal wounds of the past. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends and family, and of course, subscribe to our channel to not miss any incredible content like this. Leave your opinion on this story in the comments, and who knows, share with us your own experience of overcoming and forgiveness. Thank you very much for following along until here, and see you in the next video. Bye!